But the lumberjack in your life with anger management issues, look no further. We have the perfect weapon for you. Hey there, welcome back everybody. Today, we actually been surprised, blessed even, with a brand new update coming ye old all the way from Tard Chem, all the way in, I think it's Eastern Europe, I have no idea where they actually are, the Steel Gladiator Season Update. Now, with this update, it's pretty prototypical to pretty much every other update that you've experienced so far. If you're thinking for something brand new, eh, they got a couple of things in here that might be of interest. First things first, the brand new Arena Mode. Now, Arena Mode is essentially a 3v3 mode that's either ranked or unranked, that's taking place into three maps here, the Power Center, City Pond, and Defense Line. We've looked at those in previous videos, so if you want to take a look at those, go ahead and look through those, or you can just go ahead and hop in yourself onto the map. It's pretty typical, there are quite a few maps that share similar themes with already existing maps, so don't be like, oh wow, completely different maps, it's more like, eh, different versions of already existing maps. And this time, you can either enter in as a solo person, or you can enter in with a group. So it's kind of an actual nice little situation in which you can actually have single-player rated experiences here. Now, unfortunately, like Clan Wars, you do not really actually earn uh, uranium. However, you do earn scrap metal, along with other additional rewards, depending on your actual rank within the arena mode. Now, if you don't know what I mean, you can come over here into the actual game itself, click on the little icon, go to the rewards section here, and depending on your actual level within the arena mode, you actually do earn a quite a few interesting parts here. And as you see all these very interesting blueprints here, these blueprints are actually supposed to be blueprints that you can access during the arena mode that you do not need any actual additional parts to utilize. So in this case, all you need is a blueprint and you can use this car inside the arena mode. So in a way, it actually acts as a way for people who are just starting out into this game to actually be competitive within the arena mode. Now, as to whether or not this means that they're actually competitive is a completely different thing. However, they do look pretty swanky, and they do actually include some pretty decent weapons here, especially when you start getting up there into legendary tier and higher ups. Along with that, the arena also contains additional little rewards here that actually do act and give you a little bit of cash here. So, for example, we get the coupons for a rare workbench, which just means that you no longer pay for the actual crafting cost of the item. In this case, you get five coupons, so that means you can craft the items five times. You also get something here like the Survivor's Container, which actually does contain a CK of some sort, as you can see right there, the Dire Wolf, the Boombox, Tropical Cyclone, Redbird, and Cyrus. There's also levels that you gain for the Season Pass itself, 5,000 points here, which I believe equates to one and a half levels. No, it indicates it's just a one level. Sorry, my bad. I thought it was 3,000. It's actually 5,000. Beyond that, you also get things like engineer's badges, which can actually be exchanged uh, for resources, containers, and other valuables, along with armor parts from previous seasons, so in that way you can actually earn a little bit of money from them. And this is a completely free mode that you do not need the battle pass to access, so it is quite nice to actually do get some rewards. However, this also means that you have to have either pretty good skill or get lucky in the arena mode itself. And you can see that rewards do scale into the latter games. You also get work pieces here, but I almost consider these functionally useless because they're not actually unlimited blueprints. And in fact, with some of these parts, you can only craft it twice or a few times before you're completely out. In the case of the Janabi, you can only craft it once. So technically, they do have the ability to craft items with this that you do not have from previous seasons. However, to very limited quantities. So that's the arena mode. Beyond that, we also have the regular season pass itself, the Steel Gladiators. Now, we can always go ahead and look at the actual nodes here, but this is kind of boring. Let's actually take a look inside the game itself and take a look at the rewards. So first things first, we do have the free terror of rewards, and we do have the actual exclusive battle pass rewards here. So we'll just do it from the perspective of someone who owns a battle pass, because that'll be 99% of you, because that is the best value proposition within this entire game. So first things first, we get a modified Thern here, which is essentially a downgraded version of the Jewel, which I believe is a pack-only exclusive weapon. But this you can actually get, and it fires in a crazily fast pattern, and since it's an auto cannon of some sort, the projectiles actually go a very long distance with reduced accuracy and high drop. So, very jazzy here. A kind of nice assault weapon, if you will. Got a couple of interesting portraits and backgrounds, which, if you're into that thing, you're into that thing. Next, we also got some coins here and some lovely, lovely coupons, so you get a little bit of money here. The coupons are for people who are just starting into this game. So if you actually want to get started and get a little bit of extra dosh in your bank, definitely utilize the coupons to their full advantage. Beyond that, we got the aura here, which seems kind of funny, too, because from what I understand, isn't the aura already interesting? Isn't the aura already a weapon that you can craft inside the Dawn's children? Yeah. What? <laughs> Interesting. 
So, now, are they also giving you weapon blueprints to factions you already have unlocked? And are already permanently unlockable forever? Okay. Interesting. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I don't even know how to think about that. That's just incredibly odd. And then they also have the ore workpiece. Which almost seems to suggest that the ore is being taken out of commission. Has it been, like, serious? Okay, I have some serious questions now. I have some serious questions now, because when I see something appear in the season, I assume that means you don't have access to it after the season is over, because that's what literally list inside the patch notes. So is the aura now locked for new players? Are you no longer able to level the Dawn's children? Because the issue is I can't tell because I have a account that already has this all unlocked, because I had everything leveled to 15, you know, a year or two ago. So, uh, a bit interesting, uh, a bit interesting. I have some questions. Hopefully that is not the case because these have already been permanently unlocked for many, many people and to all of a sudden lock it behind a paywall, be kind of stupid. I don't think that's the case, but I have some serious fucking questions. Oh, goodness. Beyond that, we have a nice little decor item, the eye socket, very fancy little flip out animation. Got a nice little hologram here. It looks pretty jazzy. Some more coupons, stickers, nice background here. 100 more coins. And then finally, once we get to level 16, we actually do get the Therm Workpiece and Blueprint at 17. The fact that it's split over two iterations would be kind of odd to me, but all right, okay. Considering that the Therm is going to be one of the more popular weapons to come out of this season, I'm surprised it's not actually more prominent. Beyond that, we have a nice little CK Pylum here, which I believe is for the M37 Piercer. So nice, Piercer is getting a little bit of love here, considering that Piercer has generally be considered pretty bad and actually is kind of nice so congratulations to the piece looking very very stabby beyond that we have the thrombone here which is the nice little rocket launcher that i believe that the longer they're in flight the better their maneuverability gets so it's kind of like a nice long range version of the nest rocket launcher beyond that we got a couple of badges only available to those that have purchased Got a couple of free epic coupons, which is always nice. Give you a couple of coins from that. Some free building supplies to make customizations for your garage. More coins for Battle Pass. And then the actual recipe at 25 and 26 for the Thrombone. For the Battle Pass people, you get a nice little CK Z Frankenstein, which kind of looks like a mixture between the Ravager theme and more of a scrap theme for this. I just do like the nice sleek profile of it with the nice sharp angular bands everywhere definitely does look very cool and does fit within the theme across that. I do like that. I kind of hope these uh, front lights are actually functional. That would be kind of jazzy, but that's just me. I used the, what was this? This is for the humpback, right? Yeah, I used the humpback a lot when it came to a lot of my initial builds, so definitely kind of nice to see that. Beyond that, we got a nice little paint here, which I'm actually curious, what does this look like on my car? Not too bad, kind of reminds me of the paint, like a more dull version of the a steel plate paint that you get from the, I think it's the Ravagers or the Kinesh Riders event historically. We got that, a nice little stick deer here, which does look pretty unjazzy. We got the trigger work piece here, which is interesting. A blueprint that you could already unlock with the Dawn's Children, I believe, no, 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 sorry, not the Dawn's Children, I'm completely wrong, no, this is a Syndicate, no, not the Syndicate, it is from the Founders, I'm not sure why, I was getting all mixed up there for a second. And then we have the Flywheel work piece, which I thought was also permanently unlocked, but I guess not. Considering this used to be a function reserved for engines that was already in existing factions. But let me see if that actually is available inside the scavengers. Yeah, no, it's here. Interesting. I'm curious as to why they're releasing work pieces over faction blueprints. These are parts that you could permanently unlock already. At least, that's from my understanding, unless they've recently changed that and made these no longer permanent upgrades, which, if that's the case, it's a bit of BS, but I've already said that a thousand times, so let's move on. Next, we got a nice, some more, the die is cast, although it looks like it's said all in Latin here, so kind of jazzy. We got the Thresher blueprint here, which is essentially the, I don't want to say the upgraded version of the Impulse, but I think it is, so kind of nice. Next, we got the CK Z Trump card. Which I understand actually has a unique sound signature that's different from the Quantum, so it's kind of nice that the CKs are actually getting a little bit more work into them, not just in their models and textures, but also with their sound design. So definitely does seem that they're improving their CKs here. But considering that all these CKs are sunset content, it also does seem a bit weird that they're putting a lot more time and effort into CKs that they won't be able to permanently monetize. Kind of funny, kind of odd. Beyond that, we got the new 
SD15 Vulture, which is a nice facehugger-esque drone here that kind of acts like a mine and a drone mixture. Definitely interesting. I actually was looking at the damage coming from Mr. G's channel, but the fact that these things are actually only four energy makes their kind of lackluster damage actually seem a bit more useful. Definitely nice for a sneaky S card that you know, just run around in invisibility and fires up a couple of drones and then F's off back into invisibility land. Next, we got the coupons for the legendary work bench here, which is kind of nice considering that the legendary workbench is quite expensive. Actually getting a coupon for that does end up equating to a little bit of money. Now, oddly enough, unless you're using uh, crossoutdatabase.com or .net, I wouldn't recommend actually utilizing these on workbenches for items that are still not a positive profit margin without the coupon. You might as well just maximize the money you earn from it as opposed to minimize losses, but I suppose money either either way. Next, we got something that kind of looks like a mix between drywall and rust, which, interesting legendary paint. I'm not quite sure how I feel about this, because this just kind of makes like your car look like it has acne. <laughs> But hey, maybe someone's gonna like that paint, who knows. Next we got the Assembler, which, again, I still do not understand these blueprints for already existing parts, but okay. Next we got 300 in-game coins locked behind the Battle Pass, and then finally we get the Vulture blueprints separated across two levels. The CK Sequitool for the Spock 3, a legendary skin for a legendary Tesla gun. Very jazz, they do like the nice sleek profile of this. Definitely very reminiscent of the other two CKs. Beyond that, we got the Hardon here, or the Hadron. I'm sure it's supposed to be Hadron, but calling it the Hardon kind of sounds a little bit funny. Hehehe. <laughs> I don't know why, I have like a ramified rule here. Beyond that, it does just the what it says here reduces all reload time of weapons by 50% that equalizes the reload, depending on all reloading weapons on your car. Not sure how that actually equates out into the game itself. I can't actually mess around this because. I don't actually have the reload perk or access to a promo account to even test this, so thank you, Tarjam. <laughs> Beyond that, again, another work piece for already existing blueprints, Griffin, again. My goodness, I wonder how much of the Battle Pass is just this. So next we got Storage Expansion here for Battle Pass owners, free little bit of 100 coins, so that'll be available to everyone. And then we also have some more blueprint expansion here, only three this time instead of the five previously. So I wonder if that's in a way to kind of tamper down on the expectations. We got the work piece and the blueprints as well. And the jazzing, sorry, jazzy blazing Edna. And then we got a kind of nice little steel gladiator event statue here. Those look pretty good. And then finally, after level 55, you just get a consecutive reward of 20 coins per level. So kind of nice overall, I would say. The little questions about the repeat blueprints here for the aura and the other already existing weapons is kind of concerning. And the fact there's quite a few of them within the season pass, equating to almost 10% of the season here, is a bit interesting. But considering that 10% of this battle pass is already existing blueprints that to quite a few of the player base and quite a few players here is exactly zero worth for you. Yay! As well as the fact that a lot of the blueprints are literally just the same blueprints but staggered twice. So in a sense, nearly 10% of this expansion is kind of useless for a lot of people. But, eh, that's kind of usually how it ends up being for a lot of this. Not to mention that I never, ever, ever utilize these stabilizers whatsoever. Because fusing your parts, unless you're actually into the end, end, end game for this game, you're never going to utilize it. Because I believe it requires you to already have a uh, stat that you want to save on it. So this would be for your second or third uh, fusion. Which, at that point, you're spending thousands upon thousands of coins trying to stabilize something to an actual usable level. And in this case, it's only for, I think, a legendary. They didn't give you an epic or a special or blue tier stabilizer. Yeah, no. They just gave you a legendary stabilizer, which, I guess for those in the end end game, is quite useful for everyone else. If you're fusing legendary parts, then you're probably not listening to me, because you're already filthy rich. Ugh, let's take a look at the rest of the battle zones. Beyond that, leveling is exactly the same from last time here. If you actually go into the seasonal challenges here, it's really basic stuff. And what that means is that for me, I'm basically not going to be doing this season until it's almost over. In the last like week, I'll be crunching through this on stream and you'll be seeing how quickly you can level up. I might be doing something about the arena modes, who knows? So same thing, so you have the daily, the weekly, and the weekly harder modes. The weekly challenges always carry over to the next week and they stay with you the entire time. Beyond that, the seasonal notes, just making sure basically all the blueprints you earn during the season will not actually uh, stay with you persistently. They will lock upon the end of the season. 
If you don't know what the difference between a blueprint and a reward is, you can kind of tell it by the icon. So the one with the little infinity icon here, this is a blueprint, as noted in the corner. And the one that's a workpiece is the one that doesn't have the infinity icon, nor does it actually have the background on it. And this just indicates something that you can craft to alert uh, a certain amount of times. In this case, you can craft this aura workpiece four times. And that stays with you permanently until you actually utilize it. And so blueprints end when the season ends, and that's about it. Again, you already know my opinion on this because every single video I rail against Tarjem for making blueprints temporary. Why? I don't know. This is freaking stupid. Every single time. It's like, hey, you know, what's a great thing to do? Let's make sure our work only is valid for like a 30 day period and then no one else wants it. I'm sure the Steam charts for this is going to look absolutely fabulous. But considering that they didn't actually integrate a Twitch event for this is baffling to me. I mean, the last time they did, the last two times they actually did a uh, Twitch integration event, it's been fabulous because the amount of people actually on Twitch watching Crossout, like 10x, 12x for this. It's like, why don't they release like a two week long Twitch, uh, Twitch integration for this? I don't know. They could easily just throw stickers or resources or premium time into this and it would work. They already gave you three days of premium time for like server maintenance. Why couldn't they just do that for Twitch? I, I seriously don't know. Targem is like the only company I have seen that just does not care about the community aspect of this game beyond the forums. It's like forums, oh yeah, it's great to get feedback, but natural growth and eyesight on this game through actual incentives given to creators? Nah, who would, nah, who would care about that? <laughs> And then beyond that, it's just all the specifications for the existing parts. I've already talked all about them, so let's just go ahead and continue on. Uh, beyond that, we have a bunch of miscellaneous changes here. They just fixed a couple of snag areas on existing maps, so less places to get stuck. The number of unbuckled objects on Fortress has been improved, which will probably improve your performance. Plus, they also have the brand new disc launcher here, Zeripa. Now, unfortunately, like I said, I don't have a promotional account here, so I can't really showcase this to you because it would cost me a lot of money, and I'm pretty sure no one has this unlocked yet, besides that they spent a bunch of coins on it, so, yay. But it's essentially just a blade launcher. You can shoot it at cars as a very high impulse, does a moderate amount of damage. If you leave it onto the ground, people can actually run over the objects that are stuck into the ground, or the discs that are stuck on the ground, and it deals damage to them. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how well this works as something that de-wheels or de-frames cars. But that'll be later on down the line. Beyond that, the cap can and the jungle bow, the cables actually set by these things are actually broken if you go behind an object, which is quite nice. Being actually stuck between an object and a mine that are between you, it kind of makes it infinite that you have to stay there until the uh, mine actually expires, which can be upwards of a minute. This thing, the Argus, now can actually target the cap can king as well as the ripper, who's definitely very interesting. That makes it a bit more useful here and probably much more mandatory as opposed to just being a purely anti-missile thing. Tracks now have extra surface traction on water here, as opposed to it reducing on water. So definitely very interesting to make your car a bit more stable overall, which is quite nice. There's also a bunch of interface improvements here, which is also kind of nice. So it's got a nice brand new song here. Let's listen to it. I do kind of like that. It's a nice little, like an aggressive, chill guitar ballad here. For some reason, it reminds me of like a Chevy commercial. Like I'm about to hear a Chevy or a Ford F-150 tear around the corner with a giant dust cloud in the back. Ford F-150. <laughs> assistant in the sky. <laughs> I don't know. That's what it reminds me of. Beyond that, they updated a couple of sounds here and optimizes for all these various weapons here. The Core Jewel, the Trump Card TK, which was just released. The Pulsar improved Engineer Badge Exchange sound, which interesting little change but all right cool why not beyond that there's actually a really cool change here and it's the amd fx super resolution so this works similar in nvidia's dlss which is dynamic learning super sampling if i remember correctly but it's essentially a way to upscale your image on your screen to a high resolution without actually having to cast it in native resolution resulting in improved image quality with some potential artifacts and an overall reduction in the intensity of the performance here. So for example, I can run, say, my game at uh, 4K, even though my monitor is only 1440p, but that way it actually dramatically reduces the resource cost. Plus that allows you to, say, enable other things like antistropic filtering or 
shading or whatever sort of thing they can enable while FSSR is working here. 32-bit has actually been destroyed, and the Bulldog has now been increasing the damage for all rockets, which is quite nice, making it a bit more useful. And a couple of other changes here, along with a bunch of bug fixes. So, what do you guys think about this season? Again, it's still continuing with a bunch of trends I don't like. I do like a lot of the new weapons here. I have a couple of questions about the brand new weapons that are just really old weapons added in there. Does that mean are they being eliminated from the previous roundup? I don't know. Beyond that, what do you guys think about the brand new arena mode here? Are you all excited about that? Yay or nay? Leave your thoughts down below. On that, guys, I want to thank you all for joining the evening. Thank you all for joining me this evening. There we go. I can speak words. Fantastic. Beyond that, I want to thank you all again, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> yourself.